right, this is going to be a deeper analysis inside the Wright v. Kleiman case recently came out on the video I just recently posted, a much deeper analysis and the possible effect on the January hearings with COPA versus Wright and BTC Core and the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. This is Gavin Mail from a non-lawyer's perspective. So let's break it all down. Now, as the, you know, the, the ruling itself, it stems from an, an operative complaint, an instrument. So in order to really determine like this partnership issue, because I want to really break down like what the court found with this partnership issue and the origins of Bitcoin further. Uh, the operative instrument is a May 18th amended complaint. May 18th, 28, excuse me, May 14th, 2018 amended complaint. Now it's a ginormous 502 page complaint so 54 pages of pleadings, and it's a, it's a huge undertaking, but I've summarized it here as follows. It alleges that Craig and Dave collabor collaborated to create Bitcoin and mine Bitcoins from 2009 to 2013. This is just based on the origins only, okay? Specifically, it claims that Craig and Dave partnered from 2008 until 2011 to research and develop Bitcoin and write the Bitcoin white paper. In 2011, they, they supposedly conducted their Bitcoin mining activities through an LLC called W&K Info Defense Research that was set up in Florida. The complaint states that Wright and Dave mined over 1.1 million Bitcoins together through W&K and other mining activities from 2009 to 2013. It asserts that Bitcoins were stored in wallets that were held jointly by Craig and Dave and then later Craig and W&K. After Dave died in 2018, 2013, it alleged that Craig unlawfully took sole ownership and control of the Bitcoins. The complaint alleges that Craig now controls the up to 1.1 million Bitcoins belonging to Dave and the estate. All right, so in summary, the complaint alleges that they created Bitcoin together. That was the origin as a partnership and created the white paper together, two guys, and that now Craig has control of all the Bitcoin. Do a absolute ginormous litigation charade of pleadings and motions and discovery and just an absolute war over over two and a half years from 2018 to 2020 uh there was another complaint that was filed up in washington district court where jimmy Wynn, who's claims to be craig's le uh, legal liaison and was the ceo of n chain at that time was was being subpoenaed to testify. I wasn't able to read his testimony on the, on the actual deposition itself, but it was up in a case because it looks like it's still sealed. It was up in a case in the Washington District Court. It was, would be interesting to see exactly what was said there. Uh, as we get more further, just into narrowing down into the origins of Bitcoin, okay? And how or if this partnership existed between these parties, okay, and what the courts ended up saying here. So now on the appeal, uh, after the, the jury, a fascinating, absolute fascinating. Let me break down this a little bit more in detail. But but before I do that, let me just summarize what, what it said on the appeal, okay? It was an appeal involving the origin, uh, the original ownership dispute of the origins of Bitcoin. Okay, the estate sued Cl Wright, claiming that the partnership, uh, they had a partnership to develop the original Bitcoin protocol and mine Bitcoin. A jury found that no partnership existed between Kleiman and Wright. That was the finding of the jury. Now, the appeal was that the judgment in favor of Wright was an error. They found, they, you know, the estate says that there was an error in the jury instructions and under Florida law, there was a partnership and the court misinterpreted the law. The court here found that there was no abuse of discretion in the district court's decision to vacate certain sanctions against Wright and deny all the state's motion for new trial. So the appeals court agreed with the district court and the jury's verdict in favor of Wright should stand, meaning no partnership agreement existed. To go a little deeper on the partnership issue, okay? So in, in Florida, a partnership must contain a common purpose joint proprietary interest in the subject matter, the right to share profits and duty to share losses, joint control of right of control. So the dispute was whether or not the, in the state's view, 
the newer law, which was FRUPA, which took effect in 1995, had control over the common law in Florida. And ultimately, uh, the court decided, you know, decided here that there was absolutely no partnership and the state, the state failed to show that the newer law abrogated the, the common law or otherwise changed the rules of the partnership formation relevant to its claim. One thing that's telling here is that's going to, in my perspective, is going to be have effect on the upcoming January hearings is, first of all, it's already been well decided. It's clearly established law now. There was no partnership and Wright owns and controls 1.1 million Bitcoin. That's, that's been decided now. That's no longer in dispute. That is a published opinion. What's interesting here is that the estate sought extensive discovery, okay? And they made wild and typical attorney, wild and crazy allegations, totally unproven, uh, without facts. A lot of a circus, I would call it like circus antics in their pleadings uh, about claims that were totally just un unsupported. Ultimately, it was a discovery dispute where Wright was unable to produce all of the uh, all of the showing of how much Bitcoin he actually had. And Wright said that it was impossible. In 2011 or 2012, Wright transferred ownership of all the Bitcoin he had mined or acquired or would have acquired to the Tulip Trust, of which he was both a trustee and beneficiary. Wright controlled seven of, of eight of the key slices at this time. And he required, he required the eighth key slice to get access. So he had was unable to actually get access to the to Bitcoin holdings to even determine how much he had so he could show the court. So uh, the court sanctioned him, saying, "Oh, that was unbelievable," you know. And they actually added more to that. And what what the uh, the appeal finds is that the court stepped way outside of its bounds, and you know the sanctions were were un basically the the, the sanctions were. It was actually fascinating. It was a magistrate judge that issued the sanction against Wright. And then Wright appealed to the district court judge, which is what it's called is, is an objection to the magistrate's finding. So it technically wasn't a actual appeal. It was an objection inside the district court to the magistrate's findings. That's where the initial objection happened, which was now decided on the, uh, on the appellate level. But as as they're arguing back and forth and Wright's saying he cannot get access to this, however, that a courier was going to be coming on a timed event. Now, this would have been probably uh, 10 years after the initial Tulip Trust. You know, there was a certain amount of timeline he had set up in this Tulip Trust where he would be getting a bonded courier with the last eighth slice to the private keys to, to be able to open the trust up and access this encrypted file. And so four days after the court issued its ruling, all of a sudden Wright filed a notice stating that a third party has provided the necessary information and key slice to unlock the encrypted file. And that he had produced a list of his Bitcoin holdings as ordered by the magistrate. So he complied with the court's ruling. And it, so to summarize, you know, going back to the original operative amended complaint where where the estate claimed that they were partners together and that now that Craig controls over 1.1 million Bitcoins, you know, after intense litigation, that complaint was filed in 2018, to then the jury trial in 2021, making the findings and the rulings and completing everything and the court making its final ruling, to then on the appeal itself, all right, where the, the court the jury found that there was no partnership agreement and that only one. Now I don't want to, I don't want to say this because this wasn't part of the ruling, but, but the complaint alleged Craig controls all 1.1 million Bitcoins. That's what the complaint says. The other side. So the court found there wasn't any partnership. It didn't make a finding on whether or not Craig has those million Bitcoins. It didn't necessarily say, Oh, Craig has them. He, they, it did find that there was, no partnership, that no one else created the protocol. So the origins itself were just created by Craig. That would be uh, 
what would be called inferred. But ultimately, man, this is this is really an exciting exciting matter because I guarantee you those uh, attorneys for Wright, he's got some new legal team are 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 probably doing a full analysis of this complaint and the five the five hundred and two page complaint and then the mammoth amount of research that needs to be done to really go through this in, in much further detail. I'm sure they've got a team of people doing that because they're gonna need to bring this in. I mean I, I, I summarize this in ten minutes, you know, it's basically, you know, just a, a scratch on the surface. But I mean the origins, origins of Bitcoin is what it was about. And those these origins now are clearly defined to have not involved anyone else. No partnership existed other than this guy Wright. All right. So now the identity itself of Satoshi is, is going to be a matter of law in January. And it's going to be, it's going to be hard. I mean, it looks like it would be pretty hard to avoid this decision and say, well, as a matter of law, this already went to a jury. I mean, how, how can you, you know, if you're COPA, how are you going to, they'd have to, they'd have to show that somebody else was involved. Okay. Like, okay. There was another party that wasn't mentioned in this complaint. That could be a possibility. However, it's been defined that, that it definitely wasn't, wasn't Kleiman. Kleiman was not partner of Craig. It was only Craig. So we're coming down to who, who else could COPA be bringing forward to show that that Craig was not Satoshi Nakamoto. It'll be, a, this is a really uh, interesting time to, to be involved in the legal industry to watch this stuff. So it looks like, you know, maybe considering going out there, you know, to going, I've got to follow up here. And, and it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, there's a possibility of me going out there. So I'm going to just uh, kind of coordinate that with the parties and some of the, the man behind the scenes, maybe uh, giving me a, a, a friendly, uh, a friendly, you know, honorable invite to the, to the hearings. So we'll see. I, I look forward to it. And if so, I'll definitely be doing an analysis on this thing when I'm there and any kind of support I can have to try to not interject hyperbole and a bunch of other crap and a bunch of nonsense just to try to stick to what's there and what the court's saying, you know, from a non-lawyer's perspective, because it's a, you know, I can offer a different, a whole different perspective than a, than a, a bar attorney from one way or the other and they're maybe like you know leaning towards one side so i'm trying to just be as neutral as possible just do a full analysis on this as to how it's going to potentially go and and at this point this case is very strong it's going to be incredibly hard for copa to not let the court rely on this 11 circuit court decision it just seems you know, I'll have to really think it through. I mean, what, what is their position going to be of how there was a partnership with someone else and it wasn't Craig? Well, so it's going to take some, definitely some, some thinking as to how, what their strategy will be on this because it, 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 lo it appears very, very, uh, it appears their backs are, are up against the wall with this recent decision that there was no partnership. No one else created Bitcoin. That appears to be the case. All right. This is Gavin Mill. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bells. If you like videos like this, I'll put a, the court case inside the link here. You can check it out. You know, I, Handcash isn't doing referral links anymore, it looks like. So I'll put a Handcash thing in there. I want to try to find a way to uh, make this somehow like, you know, where I can make money on doing something like this. I could put more and more time into it. Right now, I'm just doing it as a labor of love, ultimately, and have been for the last, uh, all this amount of time. But I know it offers so much value to people out there and little people. And, you know, if I were in somebody else's shoes, you know, doing an analysis on this, what would the conclusions be? I'm going to leave that for you to decide. It's pretty interesting, though. What are the origins of Bitcoin and what is it now? All right. See you at the freaking top.